Hey guys, Chris Olka here with pro tip number two, tuba mute hacks. Uh, I'm just doing a quick one because I'm on a, a lunch break between services with Cincinnati Symphony. And uh, I saw a thread on the infamous tube net a couple of days ago about asking some questions about tuba mutes and adjusting corks and stuff for large tubas and still having, be, having them be usable for small tubas. So I was like, oh, I gotta tell you guys this. I've been doing this for the last 20 years. So sorry, I'm, I'm shooting this on my iPad at work in a rehearsal room. So here is your standard stone-lined Humsenberg aluminum spun tuba mute. Now this is a small one. They have a small and a large, uh, and this is a small one. So the first thing I want to just show it to you is like what you're looking at with a normal Humsenberg mute with the corks on them as they come from the factory. Uh, one thing that I'll tell you that I, I always like to do is I, I'm going to get up close to the camera here. You see these rubber feet? What I do is on the opposite side from the handle where I pick it up, I drill two holes and I tap them and then I put sheet metal screws with these rubber feet for um, appliances or whatever. You can get them in any hardware store. Anyway, what you do, what, what happens is that when you go to pick up your mute, you set it on the ground and it keeps the mute from rolling around, if you can see that. I can't uh, take a picture of it on the ground, but when you set it down, it doesn't roll, and the handle is always up, so you can grab it. And by the way, just for the record, when it comes to mutes, I like the handles this way, because it makes it easier to put it up and in and pull it out. When your, hand is at a, when your wrist is at an angle like this, like some of the handles, it, it's kind of awkward, and it hurts my hands, whereas this wide, fat handle on these Humes and Bergs are nice. So that's the first hack, so to speak, is these feet. Now, surface note, when you drill your mute and put these screws in there, you're gonna wanna put some, um, uh, some epoxy, or, or better yet, some silicone caulk, because you want an airtight seal. Don't ask me how I know, but you don't wanna go drilling holes in mutes, because it can really uh, affect the way that the, the mute plays. It can make something that's worse, you know, or bad, so to speak, a tuba mute, play even worse if they have holes in them and they're not designed that way. Some mutes are designed with holes, but these are not. So make sure you put a little bit of uh, silicone caulk. So as a point of reference, this is a small with your hard cork on there. And that fits, you know, your standard uh, F tubas, German F tubas, piston F tubas, um, and smaller C's and E flats. Okay, now, Here's the thousand dollar question. What do you do for a big tube mute? You get yourself a, one of these larger, same thing, stone lined, spun aluminum, Humsenberg tube mutes. And over the corks, you can, take, you can take two things, one of two things. You can either take 3M two sided tape and lay it on the sides here and here on the corks. And then over the top of it, you put either a half inch or three quarter inch pipe insulation. And you'll see it's, it's split here. And you just slide it over, press it down on the two, uh, 3M two-sided tape, and voila. Now you've got a mute that without having to move the corks or build up the corks will fit in a six quarter tuba. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is that once you've done that, I've got this film. What this is, is it's timpani rim tape. Uh, they put this on the rims of timpanis when they put the drum head over it so that every time you uh, tune or tighten or loosen a timpani drum head, you don't get squeaking from the head rubbing over the rim. That tape keeps it from squeaking. Well, guess what? That tape, when you put it on top of this foam. It also keeps it from squeaking when your bell, when you put the, the mute in and out of your bell. And believe me, if you don't, you will make a lot of racket every time you're in a soft passage trying to pull your mute out of the bell. So let me put it down and show you how it fits in my trusty six-quarter Yama York here. So here you got Yama York. You need to put a mute in. Wham. Perfect. Now, like I said, you can either use a half inch or three quarter inch uh, pipe foam insulation. Uh, but this, I mean, it fits and it's adjustable. You can push down a little bit harder if you want. 
and fiddle with how it, how it fits in there to affect how the, the response is. Now you'll notice, I'm looking at the video here, you can see the feet that I've got drilled on it. I've got it on my big tube, uh, big meat as well. But it's, it's so nice, okay? So it's like play, 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 pick up the mute, pop it in, wham, good to go. And if you wanna use it for a smaller, uh, for a smaller tuba, all you have to do, instead of the 3M tape, because I don't, I don't have a smaller tuba right now, but for the 3M, instead of 3M tape, you can get Velcro uh, strips and put them on the other, uh, put it there in place of the two-side tape. So you have Velcro on the foam and then the little hook and loops on the, on the cork. You can take it on and off, however you want. Now the final hack, and I, I find this to be really helpful, is if you'll see here, I hate when, when you're, you're trying to jam it in on a fast mute change and the um, metal rim hits your bell and you get these little dings in the bell. And I try to keep my gear cherry. And it, I hate mute dings. So anyway, what I've done is I've taken a little bit of uh, foam insulation, like squishy foam insulation, and I wrapped it around. And then I took Gorilla Tape and did multiple layers around that as well. And I didn't build it up too much, but it's enough now that number one, when you lay the mute on the ground, it doesn't make noise. It just go ding, ding, ding. And if God forbid you're trying to jam the mute in the bell and you don't want to get a, a ding on the bell and you don't hit it straight on, it won't ding your bell. You can see it, you can't see it in the video, but it doesn't it doesn't knock you know holes into your bell or dents in your bell, which I hate that. Uh, final thing is, just so you, if you're wondering as a point of reference, so that's a 20 inch bell on a York style tuba. Here's a Mirafone Hagen 497. And I just played it this morning in rehearsal at work. Mute, works, perfect. Now, sorry, I haven't warmed up. great response is great and if I don't want the mute on that or don't want to use that mute on the big tuba wham take this off this foam insulation it's pipe insulation it's slit down the middle I can't I think a, a bag of it like maybe 10 or 12 feet of it might cost you five bucks and it's certainly way less hassle than building up corks for a tuba mute uh, so I think that's all that all the news that's fit to tell on tuba mute hacks. Uh, you've got your foam instead of uh, instead of cork on top of your cork, and it's removable, of course. Tempani tape on the outside so it doesn't squeak going in and out of your bell. Uh, I always like handles that go this direction, not this direction. It's just unnatural wrist angle. And then finally, the feet, but make sure you. Uh, epoxy them and make sure they're airtight. So I uh, think that's it. Tuba mute hack pro tip number two. Hope that helps.